Have you told your friends that you see ghosts? Oh, absolutely not. Gina Rodriguez returns in Not Dead Yet. I'm back, baby. Who is that? Oh, she's the obituary writer. And Brad Garrett joins the brilliant ensemble cast. Titan, Maverick, Titan of all Mavericks. These are all words used to describe me. Baby, I got you shook. Got you shook. Not Dead Yet. Season premiere tonight, 8 30, 7 30 Central on ABC and stream on Hulu. It's the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. Well, it's almost Christmas time. We have two more podcasts left this year on the Happy Families Podcast before we take a break to spend some time with our family. In the meantime, though, what we've been doing this week is counting down our top five podcasts of the year based on downloads. We assume that downloads is a pretty good metric or measure for how much these podcasts have meant to people and how they've impacted others. Our number two podcast this year. The second most downloaded podcast of the year was actually all about how to manage fatigue, which might be useful at this time of year as we get ready to well, ramp things up for the silly season and then try to take a few days off to recover, recuperate, and enjoy family time. Please enjoy episode number 679, our second most downloaded podcast of 2023, Managing Fatigue. got a big topic today because uh, I mean holidays are supposed to be rejuvenating they're supposed to be refreshing but today we're talking about managing fatigue as a parent because parents are tired is there is there a better way to say that or is that about right you know I've been having conversations with lots of people about this lately because I am feeling exhausted I feel like I've hit rock bottom in a, in a way that I've never hit before I can hear it in your voice and there's just this acknowledgement that, you know, we have been through some of the hardest couple of years, not collectively, mm. as a human race, dealing with just so much uncertainty and stress and anxiety around, you know, COVID and um, jobs and, you know, whether or not there's enough food on the shelves at the shops. There's just been so much to deal with. And now we're dealing with the economic insecurity of interest rate hikes and so on. And and all of that insecurity and instability is ha, has taken a physical and mental toll on everybody. So I reckon, though, Kylie, that we were tired before COVID. Like, I think tiredness oh, is part of the human parent, condition. As a, as a parent, <laughs> specifically, I mean, I think tiredness is is across the board. Everybody everybody experiences it to some level. But as a parent, um, I, I I think that you know you you sign up for. A lifetime of, <laughs> yeah, exhaustion. of exhaustion. So, do you remember when we had little kids? Do you remember how how tiring it was when we had kids that were like I don't know, one and two and three? I was so exhausted that I would often wake up at about one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> still on the, on the ground. Yes. After having tried to pad off a child and wondering why <laughs> you hadn't come and woken me up to take me to bed because exhausted. you had fallen asleep in bed waiting for me. <laughs> or padding another child off in another room or something <laughs> like that. I, I mean, you were so tired when you were pregnant with our second child. We had a, like a two and a half year old pregnant with our second one. And we were at a Billy Joel concert, Brisbane Entertainment Centre, like in 2000 and I guess 2001, 2002. And you You're fell asleep. You're never going to let me live that Fell one, asleep in a rock concert. That's So exhaustion is... Yeah. It, so how do we manage fatigue as a parent? How do we get the balance right? Before we share some solutions, I want to share one quick metaphor that I found really useful, and that is the, the metaphor of a tightrope walker. Uh, so I don't think that a tightrope walker is ever what, what you might call perfectly balanced. Instead, they're in a process of constantly balancing, always adjusting, moving a bit to the left, a little bit to the right, as they move, make their way across the tightrope. And the ING on the end of the word... Tells it's, us it's active. Yeah, it's a, it's a process. It's something that we have to be continually doing. And I think that's why it's exhausting trying to get this balance right. It's never quite right, but we're always in the process of balancing. I, I, I just love that metaphor because when I think about, you know, family life in general, whether it's dealing with fatigue or, you know, kind of dealing with children's behavior challenges or eating, whatever it is, 
it's constantly changing just when you think you've got the mix right, just when you feel like you, you're you spot on, everything's going right, which is that whole balance, right? You're, you're on the tightrope and you feel like, oh, I've got this. I've got, oh, no, I don't. Well, and, I, I, and I sway I, to the other side. Every now and again, I'm feeling balanced and then one of the kids will come and say, dad. That's exactly right. Dad. <laughs> and, and there's just, there's so many moving parts. In fact, usually it's you that throws me off balance because I'll be balanced and then the kids will say, mum said to ask you. Because you're so, you're so tired of making decisions that you're making me make them. I'm like, ah, oh, I don't want to make it. In fact, every now and again, I'll say, go and ask mum. And they'll say, I already did. She said to ask you. <laughs> Just constant. So let's uh, – now, what we're going to talk about in terms of solutions, uh, they're kind of obvious, but we still don't do them well. We certainly don't do them enough. So solution number one to manage fatigue as a parent is sleep. This one's so funny because – in our house, specifically with you, when it comes time to go to bed, the more exhausted you are, the more inclined you are to turn the TV on. I know. What is it with that? And I will fall in line with that easily because I just want some brain dead time. Yeah. But it's the last thing you need to be doing. At the times when you feel so exhausted, you just need to close your eyes. I'm really frustrated that you've shared that with the world. But, but you're exactly right. The tired I am, the more likely it is that I will pick up the remote and say, let's just watch one episode of something, which is a really dumb thing because instead what I should do is pick up a book, a non-fiction book, a book that's not going to keep me captivated page after page. <laughs> but but sleep, we, we treat sleep like it's a luxury item. And the reality is it's not. It's essential. We simply cannot function well as people, as parents, as partners, if we're sleep deprived. So the average adult uh, needs approximately, say, seven and a half to nine hours of sleep per night. You can get by on less than that, but over time you go into sleep debt. The more sleep debt you have, the more likely it is that you're going to have impaired decision making. You're going to have uh, fatigue management issues. You're just not going to perform well. Well, and if your body clock is functioning, then regardless of what time you go to bed, you're going to get up at the same time every morning. So you're not getting the full amount of sleep that you need unless you stick to the routine. Right. So we've got a long weekend coming up and my recommendation for anyone who's wanting to manage their fatigue better as a parent is to get enough sleep. Just have a couple of early nights, have a couple of sleep-ins if you need them and try to get that sleep debt taken care of because it, it, it does make a difference. It doesn't mean that you won't get tired. It just means that the tiredness won't be as bone heavy and it won't set in as early. I mean, by about seven o'clock every night, you're going to be tired, but it's, it's worse when you're exhausted. Second big idea is diet. So when it comes to diet, uh, eat well. <laughs> we know we're supposed to, but the more sugar we have it, for people who are drinking, the more alcohol you have, the less effectively your body functions. I think that's kind of that's that's the message, right? I think that maybe I have it completely wrong, but I think mums are so prone to not feeding their bodies the things that they need because we eat on the run so much of the time. We feel so busy and so time poor that instead of making ourselves, you know, a healthy lunch to sit down and eat, we just go to the cupboard and grab a couple of biscuits to kind of give us that sugar hit that we need to keep going. Mm. Um, and it's just so easy to fall into that um, habit and then, you know, kind of later down the track, find ourselves in, in really challenging positions if we don't take the time to fuel our bodies with the things that we need. Just had a minor brainwave as you were saying that, and that is how much we rely on quick and easy food. Mm. So if we can make really healthy food massively accessible by peeling the carrots and having them chopped in some Tupperware in the fridge. Or, or even just making more than you need for dinner. Yeah. So, you know, when we've got leftovers in the fridge, we eat Straight great. to the leftovers, yeah, it's absolutely. It's so easy to mm. just pull out the leftovers, heat them up for break, uh, for lunch or, you know, kind of add them to something for, for a healthy lunch. Yeah. Um, but if they're not there, then it's like… Uh, and the other thing that makes it easier <laughs> is just having a meal list, right? Like knowing what we're eating, which means that we're less likely to make less healthy alternatives. Fatigue management, diet is central, sleep is the other one. Uh, and the third and final one that we're going to mention today is… Attention management. So that means that we know what we're focusing on and we're choosing to focus on it for the right reasons at the right time. And it kind of goes back to the screen issue, I guess. Uh, but it's also about being present, being intentional, being in the moment, 
Well, when I think about that, I actually think about, you know, looking at the things that I have to do in any given day and then adjusting my expectations to what I am capable of doing in a day. Right. So often we have this ridiculous to-do list. And I remember, especially when the kids were younger, I would literally stay in my gym gear all day, not because I wanted to, but number one, I didn't give myself the time to have a shower. And number two, because it meant that I could run faster. It literally gave me the sense of being energetic in spite of the fact that I didn't feel it physically, but I had my joggers on. So it meant that I could move faster. And that kind of gave me the capacity to get through my day it comes at a cost. We don't take it the time to take care of ourselves and nourish ourselves, whether it be food, sleep, exercise, whatever. It makes it so much harder for us to do the things we need to do. And I reckon we, we just need to emphasise here as well one last thing in terms of attention management, and that is it's okay to have downtime. It's okay to stare at a screen. It's okay to um, really Im- embed yourself in a book or something like that, but it's about doing it on purpose. It's about saying, okay, this is the time that I'm doing it. I know it's not going to come at any cost in relation to sleep or relationships or the other things that matter. If we get that right, then we'll manage our fatigue better. I know that they're kind of generic responses, but they really are at the very heart of managing our fatigue and get someone else to make your decisions. (laughs) (laughs) that'll do it as well maybe there's a new job out there for someone (laughs) we hope that you're enjoying the Happy Families podcast summer series we'll be back again on Monday with more on the Happy Families podcast for more information visit us at happyfamilies.com.au happyfamilies.com.au